Today's video is brought to you by Upstart.com. It's tough out there right now. And financially, we could all use a little help. Upstart is a fast and easy way to secure a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether you want to pay off credit cards, consolidate debts, or just need money for personal expenses, over a half a million people have turned to Upstart. Upstart takes more than your credit score into account and finds the smartest rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rates up front on loans from $1,000 to $50,000. It's easy and you can be approved in 24 hours, receiving your needed funds in as fast as one business day. Loan amounts are determined based on credit, income, and certain other criteria provided in your loan application. Be sure to use our link upstart.com slash board film find out how upstart can help you by clicking the link in the description oscar de la hoya seduced the public and punched out his opponents oscar de la hoya the golden boy tonight he is the challenger the former junior lightweight Former junior welterweight, former two-time welterweight, former two-time super welterweight, and former WBO middleweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. He's a Hall of Famer. He fought and beat some of the very best of his era. Okay. There could be instantaneous fireworks here. Oscar is not dancing. Ayer dijiste algo de mi esposa y ahora mencionaste mi raza y con eso no se juega y te voy a noquear. Mayo 6 te voy a noquear. wake up early in the morning, ever since I can remember, I'm talking about 3, 4 in the morning. Time of the day when one 17-year-old high school senior has already been training for two hours. He would train at 4 in the morning before heading to school. Run around my neighborhood streets, go to school, go to the gym, and go to bed. Like most who make their living by rendering other people senseless, he came from hard circumstances. One week before we met him, Oscar was held up at gunpoint. East L.A. was notoriously tough. Crime was just a part of life. They were a poor working class family on food stamps. His father instructed him in fisticuffs. You know, uh, he wanted to become a champion, he never did. He wanted to be, you know, a gold medalist, he never did. Oscar was a natural. Here's a man who was pushing me every single day. Well, people around the sport of boxing these days are singing the praises of an 18-year-old from East Los Angeles by the name of Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya has rung up an amateur record of 196 and 4. He hasn't lost a fight in the last four years. Oscar was America's best hope at Olympic gold in boxing. Oscar De La Hoya. After Oscar's triumph at the Goodwill Games, he promised his mother on her deathbed that he would win the Olympics for her. So she starts telling me, you know, um, son, um, I'm, I'm dying. And when she said that, I, I just felt like destroyed. Oscar made a promise to his dying mother that he'd fulfill his dream and bring home Olympic gold. And that was the story. And that right? was the story. Right. 
boy, was it a lot of pressure. Um, I still don't know how I did it. You should know is he has lost only one fight in four years. He has lost it to his opponent, Marco Rudolph. left hand by Oscar De La Hoya has kept the promise to his mother. His mother's dying wish was fulfilled. I was such in shock that I could swear I could swear to my life that my mother was there. When I took the gold medal, it was the most exciting moment. He had his gold medal on, and for East L.A., he was a symbol of pride. Uh, he was one of our own. Oscar returned home to tremendous fanfare. He was a fantastic fighter. He was a good-looking kid. Uh, he was friendly, approachable, signed autographs. He was the hottest star in the sport, reminiscent of the great Sugar Ray Leonard. He had groupies well before he was old enough to have groupies. Wow, that guy is really gorgeous. His movie star good looks drew in crowds of teenagers who swooned for boxing's newest star. Tonight, he is making his professional debut. Welcome to the ring, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. In his first pro fight, Oscar De La Hoya showed he could make the necessary adjustments to the pro ranks. Oscar De La Hoya opens up in dramatic fashion. Trying for the knockout in the first round. There's no question Oscar was a world-class amateur fighter. Whether he could be a world-class professional remained to be seen. Bob Arum told us the kid was great. So far, he's been better than that. Now he is on the threshold of what appears to be a tremendous boxing career in the professional ranks. He was a cross-cultural idol. A star unlike anything seen before outside of the heavyweights. Olympic champion Oscar De La Hoya in his second pro bout. 19-year-old Oscar De La Hoya. As the crowd starts to rise in anticipation of the 19-year-old from East Los Angeles. Oscar Golden Boy De La Hoya. Maybe a little bit more, huh? <laughs> Hicks out quickly. De La Hoya with a quick hand. Down to six. The count is eight. Hicks will not get up. It's all over. And this one's shorter than the first one. Well, they're going to be short for a while because Oscar Delahoy I was the type of person, type of fighter who, okay, would win fights, would put on this smile, you know, the, the golden boy. But inside, I was just miserable. I was miserable with myself because the shame that I had inside of me. How old were you when you first really started drinking? 13, 14. I knew how to hide it back then, too. To cope with his new lifestyle, Oscar turned to alcohol and women. 19 years old, the plan is to fight once a month, keep him busy. He fought uh, less than three weeks ago. gold medals and then gone on to professional titles names like Ali Fraser Leonard Foreman and Oscar De La Hoya would love to join them
In his fourth pro fight, he battered Curtis Strong until the ring doctor called the fight. De La Hoya in the white trunk. Curtis Strong goes down as this fight just barely underway. Tries to wave it off as only a flash knockdown. But as evidence, the compact power of Oscar De La Hoya. Now, Alex, this is a smaller ring than you normally see. It's 17 by 17. And again, pinned up against the ropes is Curtis Strong. Oh, the doctor is stopping the fight. The doctor has stopped the fight, and Curtis Strong is very upset. His record now, 4-0. Four, oh. four KOs, the pride of East L.A. The Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya. Catches Mayweather on the chin and again rocks him back. He stormed through his early opponents. Oscar De La Hoya rocked him and sent him to the canvas with a left hand. Talk of a future showdown with the great Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh, there he is, firing out Patience. the shots. <laughs> Again, the left hook. Look how red that ear is of Mike Rabel. Drawing the comparisons to, say, the next Sugar Ray Leonard, the next Muhammad Ali, that's way upstairs. The image was the golden boy, and both in the ring and out of the ring, he's been less than perfect. Would you also consider yourself a sex addict? Did you become a sex addict as a result of the <coughs> drinking and the cocaine? I don't consider myself a sex addict. Um, it was... I've been unfaithful to my wife. I mean, here, here people, people are seeing the golden boy and this and winning fights and, and fame and money and this. Wow, he must be happy. Inside, I was lost. Celebrities were already attending every De La Hoya fight. Yippee-ki-yay, mother. Quickly revealed the skills of a prodigy, most notably a natural and effective left hook. to 7-0. What other fighter do you see 16, 17, 18 year old girls going to the fight? But Tim, I just can't find any faults in him. I've watched a lot of tapes. He seems to be able to do everything. He can box, he can punch, he puts his punches together. He was the biggest box office draw in boxing. And he just rocked Dorsey with a left hand. Already Dorsey is busted up. The blazing speed coupled with the power and precision to end any fight at any moment. Look at those short combinations. Look at those Over punches. the right eyebrow, right on the corner of the eye. And in fact, the referee Mitch Halpern is not going to let him come out for the second round. And so it is all over. Highly successful, handsome, charismatic fighter. And then he brought in this huge Latino market, which is obviously the fastest growing market in the country. Oscar was knocked down for the first time in his pro career. Oh my! He hit him with a right hand, and it wasn't an overhand, it was a short right hand. And that should serve as a wake up call. He quickly collected himself. And one in another first round knockout. Wales down. And he's in trouble. Well, he doesn't want a war like this with Devil Ray. It's over. Maybe it's a $2 million smile. Oscar loved what being a celebrity brought in. Was it just alcohol or were there drugs involved as well? There were drugs. And I told you that all 10, 10, 3, 2, 1 to save money. Kind of my, drugs. my drug of choice was cocaine. Cocaine. He was seen with new women every other day. And of course, cocaine. Bada bing. My, my life was a big mess. Cocaine. 
Like when you're fighting at the real top level of a sport, you start taking drugs, start sleeping around. Maybe a little bit of a, of a fabricated image, but nonetheless, there is a definite image that has been sold to the public. It's paid off. You know, Madison Avenue has come running. Star-studded crowd here in the Grand Olympic Auditorium. Here's Johnny. And Billy Crystal. <laughs> Check it. Gary Shandling, I should say. Boom, perfect timing. 20 victories, 13 KOs, the number one ranked undefeated contender in the world. Twenty and zero at the time. Took him out in three rounds. But he was an absolute beast during this time. Oscar stepped up in weight to contend for the WBO lightweight title. Here in Rochester, and these people came out here to see one person tonight, and that is Oscar De La Hoya. And now, ladies and gentlemen, man your battle stations. This is the Battle of Champions, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO lightweight championship of the world. Boy, but it looks like the total package, doesn't it? Yeah, no, unlimited potential. <laughs> really does. And fun to watch. You're right. And you can see, what does that say in the hair? Zadilia, I believe it says, on the head of Oscar, or rather Jorge Paez. Of course, he won the gold medal in 1992 at the Olympics in Barcelona. He destroyed Paez in two rounds. The right hand. It may be over and is. He'll never make it. Here I have to juggle this image, you know, the golden boy being the perfect father, being the perfect husband, being this, that. Wow. And then knowing that it's not true. The golden boy had become a gold mine. He was the guy on all the commercials in the billboard. Magazine covers. I mean, the obvious, he's absolutely gorgeous. He's a strong fighter. He's a hard puncher. After De La Hoya, and as Larry mentioned, he moves up to 140 pounds for the first time tonight. You can even see it in his face, Jim. He just looks better. He looks like he's really growing into his body. Against Daryl Tyson, Oscar moved up in weight again. His speed was tremendous. This is something new. I've been hurt there by De La Hoya's left hook. Tyson beginning to cringe. What can Oscar De La Hoya do? A second round knockout forged with body blows, George. Oscar, he leaves no questions unanswered for me. <laughs> this guy's got the whole package. So here you have this kid. Good looking, nice smile, great fighter. Coming up in the ranks and basically coming down to a showdown with this great Mexican champion. Tavis already had 99 prize fights behind him with a record of 97, 1 and 1. Oscar's pretty boy persona caused Mexican fans to turn away from him. They felt he was too American and didn't embrace what it meant to be a Mexican fighter. The Chavez fight was Oscar's attempt to change that. Oscar's first punch opened a cut over Chavez's eye. Beating and humiliating an aging legend was satisfying to De La Hoya. The fight lasted four rounds before the ref stopped the fight. The win over Chavez put Oscar into a different stratosphere. He was now, without question, the face of boxing. Despite his success, Oscar had many critics 
who felt that he hadn't fought enough quality opponents. That is the, that's when he got called Chicken De La Hoya. A super fight against Pernell Whitaker was made. In a battle for the top rung on the mythical pound for pound ladder. 23 pro fights, 23 wins, 20 KOs. World Championships at 135 and 140. Now he tries for another one at 147. Pernell Whitaker was a phenom, one of the greatest defensive boxers of all time. Pernell Whitaker demonstrating with his body language he believes these moments belong to him. The professional record, 40 wins, the one loss to Jose Luis Ramirez, an obvious bogus decision. And reigning pound for pound king, the defending welterweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea is a boxing legend, and at the time, he was the best boxer on the planet. I mean, these are good wins here, people. These are not just cream puffs. The fact that he's got a jab, that he had a left hook too, that he had a right hit. Hello, look at this, Oscar Ballin back. The fight was a seminal moment for the career of Oscar De La Hoya. And Oscar De La Hoya boxed a beautiful fight. Both Olympic champions, so similar in so many ways. Look at those right hands in the face of Pernell Whitaker. I got a lot of respect for Oscar De La Hoya. And these rounds are going to be close, Dave. A lot of them. The fight went the distance. And let's go to Michael Buffer. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards for the winner by unanimous decision and new heavyweight champion of the world, the Golden Ball, Oscar De La Hoya. The win catapulted De La Hoya into the top pound for pound spot in boxing and earned him his fourth title. Out of the ring, Oscar began donating money to churches and urging kids to stay in school. Oscar spent his fortune in tremendous ways. He opened a cancer research center in his mother's name, a charter school. De La Hoya's first defense of that title he won from Pernell Whitaker. And these are back to back to back to back top class fighters that De La Hoya was taking on. It's always nice and refreshing to see that certain fighters can bring this out. Oscar's fans were notoriously enthusiastic. With the banners, and uh, they await their emperor. Fans are already on their feet, and the chant is up. The crowd is into it, which means only one thing, that the golden boy is on his way in. destroyed Hector Macho Camacho.
winning every round from start to finish. The Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. His knockout ways returned against Rivera. Boxing experts seemed certain Oscar would reign atop the boxing world for a long time to come. A couple of years ago, NBC Sports developed research that indicated more than half of the audience for Olympics telecasts was women. I wonder if the same would be true for an Oscar De La Hoya fight. By this time, Oscar had been drinking daily for seven or eight years. I thought that the Quarte fight was a glorious celebration of Oscar's good quality. He was also using cocaine regularly. All this while he rolled over opponent after opponent. To be an alcoholic, it's 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 a 24/7 job. I, I was always lying to everybody, including myself. It was just, I mean, it was it was literally a living hell. You got every girl on the planet wanted to sleep with him. Nobody could know of my problems. I, mean, I, I would I would keep everybody away from from what I was feeling. I, I just knew how to hide it. See, all the contentious incidents in De La Hoya's career started when he moved up to 147 and above. Because below that, nobody could really touch him. A packed house of more than 12,000 fans, some having paid scalpers up to $7,000 a ticket. This fight has generated $13.5 million, the largest non-heavyweight gate in boxing history. Oscar would take on fellow undefeated champion, Felix Trinidad. The fight brought out all the celebrities. Celebrities here, it is indeed a star standard affair. So crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. That's terrible. Green is good. <laughs> Two fighters who seem to like each other less and less every day. Round one begins. Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad. This was a huge, mega fight at the time. Uppercut lands for De La Hoya. By most accounts, Oscar won the first nine rounds easily. I remember leaning over to the guy next to me, sort of in shock, and said, De La Hoya is making Trinidad look foolish. Oscar popping Trinidad with a four-punch combination, stepping forward. Outclassing Trinidad. You got him controlled. You, you, you got the fight. De La Hoya believed that he was so far ahead in the fight that he basically decided to coast. Word, you tell me, do you think that De La Hoya has won the fight the way he's fought the last several rounds? I don't think so. I think he had the fight in control, and now he's leaving in the hand of the but judges. Inexplicably, in the 10th, 11th, the 12th rounds, he backed up, he ran away, he gave away his advantage. Regardless, the fight was a lackluster one. For the winner by majority decision, de Puerto Rico, Felix Quito Trinidad. Felix Trinidad did not win that fight, Oscar De La Hoya lost. I did feel as if I won. I felt like the winner. You know, um, I, I know I won. I, you know, he's a great fighter. I thought I put a boxing lesson of my life. I felt kind of hurt because I felt as if I let down a lot of people. There were many who thought of De La Hoya Trinidad as a fight that might rescue boxing. Instead, it only compounded the problem and left many shaking their heads wondering exactly what happened and why did it happen that way. A lot of people's mind, he won that boxing match. 
But this night, he's got to focus on what could be the toughest fight of his career. You take that ghost into the ring with you, you may come out a ghost yourself. He's got to let it be. Oscar rebounded from the loss by knocking out Daryl Coley in the seventh round. Just body shots, one with each hand. Referee Wayne Kelly looking in on Coley. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want any more. And Oscar De La Hoya makes good on his vow. I'm going to be a destroyer, he said, and a destroyer he was. After making quick work of Daryl Coley, Oscar faced off with Sugar Shane Mosley. Oscar was so mad about the fact that he had backed up and run away from Trinidad that he vowed publicly to go in and slug it out with Mosley. have two young fighters who are personable, good-looking, well-spoken, and vicious, lethal. Muhammad Ali put it, who will dare to be great? Who will be bolder? And who will be tougher? Perhaps the most important thing that's happened here so far is that Delahoy has been hit by some pretty sharp punches. Momentarily buckled Delahoy with the right hand. You don't want him to miss. Delahoy with a quick little left inside. That's another thing Delahoy don't get enough credit for is how many great fights he was involved in. <laughs> you know, Delahoya was involved in great fights. This was perhaps both Oscar and Sugar Shane's greatest fight. Both men went forward, determined to stay aggressive. Hard right uppercut by Mosley landed on the point of Delahoya's chin. Oscar fires the right hand of his own. But this was a tremendous fight. What a fight. The fight we had hoped for. It lived up to its expectations. New it thrilled the fans and brought a new level of respect for both fighters. I fought 12 rounds, I fought hard, I gave an exciting performance. Who says that if he wins this fight, he'll be headed up to 154 pounds to seek a title there. And people were doubting De La Hoya at this point in his career because he'd taken a couple of losses and they were wondering where he was going to go. He stepped up to 154. Oscar rebounded from the Mosley loss. The new thing was for fighters to question Oscar's heritage. Fernando Vargas called Oscar a fake Mexican, questioning De La Hoya's toughness. The Mexicans want to see a fight, you know? He says he's Mexican, so let's fight, you know? His whole career. The Golden Boy is golden once again. The Golden Boy savaged Vargas. I loved feeling sorry for myself, you know. A stormy few months saw Oscar's entire world change. He changed his trainer once again and left his promoter, Bob Arum. His wife left him. Both was, you know, substance abuse and infidelity. Shayna filed a $62.5 million palimony suit. His cocaine abuse? Cocaine. Worse than. Now, you, were you abstaining? Because I remember you used to have that thing. <laughs> oh, no, you got to. I knew that was coming up. Uh, the whole training camp, I was drinking. Really? Yeah, yeah, it was a big problem. And it's never a good sign when fighters start recording CDs. He got into training camp late for this fight, concentrating on recording a CD. It's impossible for Oscar's lifestyle not to cause physical erosion over time. Meanwhile, all of 
this occurred while Oscar was stepping up in weight to take on Bernard Hopkins in a battle for the undisputed middleweight championship. Hopkins, for his part, signaling that he would fulfill his role as the executioner. This is the one we've all been waiting for. The much anticipated unified middleweight championship of the world. The size difference was evident. A guy who started his career at super featherweight. <laughs> you know, this is a guy who was not a real middleweight at all. Oh, he, he really whacked him with that left hook. React, he may not be. Oh, he's not getting up. After this, after the Hopkins fight, De La Hoya's career was effectively over. He was knocked out for the first time in his career. Oscar was now a big name with fading skills. The perfect opponent for Floyd Mayweather. Oscar was the pay-per-view star. But finally, Mr. Mark Anthony. Oh, say. Can you see by the dawn's early light? It was the sports showdown of the year. De La Hoya was the biggest draw in boxing. The Golden Boy, oh, Oscar De La Hoya. He finally chooses to leave his dressing room and instantly the crowd inside the arena sees on big screens that he has donned a Mexican sombrero and will apparently walk to the ring accompanied by Mexican music. So many of the guys that Mayweather was beating on the way up were guys who De La Hoya had already beat. Mayweather was fighting a lot of De La Hoya leftovers. Mayweather was after De La Hoya's stardom. De La Hoya was after Mayweather's status. Is Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. You can expect a lot of that as long as he's still in the fight. It was a close fight. And you have to give credit to De La Hoya for making it so close when De La Hoya was really at the end of his career. There are the body shots, and there is a sustained attack. Right hand counters of Floyd Mayweather. He's so quick and slinky with his right hand. Roger Mayweather said he, he's going to get tired, he's going to get tired, we'll get him later in the fight. Mayweather's win over De La Hoya earned him his sixth title and smashed pay-per-view records. And new WBC Super World Awake, champion of the world. And the crowd appreciates both. Oscar made a fight of it, but Mayweather won the split decision. Oscar De La Hoya had been the biggest earner of his generation. Pacquiao jumped up two weight classes to fight Oscar De La Hoya, who is a natural welterweight. Commands at all times, above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. The Pac-Man would be the final nail in the coffin. Dominated from the start. That momentarily shocked Oscar. Later, Oscar De La Hoya would say of Manny, he was the greatest boxer I ever faced. Just dominating, going to the body, going to the head, taking everything away from De La Hoya. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Let's, let's finish it. That's it, let's go. Right it's right. Manny Pacquiao has beaten Oscar De La Hoya. And it was the right thing to do. His boxing story is one of incredible success and self-destruction. I was a 10-time world champion. I lost world titles. I won world titles in professional boxing. Explosive power, 
combination punch and ability. Boxing's newest young sensation, the man whom Bob Aaron says has a chance to become the biggest of all the big stars in the sport. Boy, but it looks like the total package, doesn't it? Yeah, no, unlimited potential. <laughs> the Golden Boy. I was born to be a fighter. I was bred to be a fighter. That's that's the bottom line. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.